Now, I would argue there's a pretty good chance that most of you guys watching are familiar with the Altus Sigma. That electric dirt bike, or Emoto, essentially gained a ton of popularity due to its super high voltage. We're talking a 98 volt bike. And I've always been a huge fan of high voltage bikes. It's the main reason why I love the Raw Mantis because this thing is 72 volts, which historically was considered high voltage. Now, electricity can be confusing, and a lot of people don't fully understand the, the benefits of high voltage. And there is an imperfect uh, plumbing analogy that goes, amperage is equivalent to the diameter of a pipe, if you think about moving water through it, and voltage is more equivalent to the water pressure and that's why when you multiply amps times volts, you get the total wattage or, you know, the total output. And that also explains why motors have an RPM per volt metric. And in terms of riding feel, essentially a higher voltage system is just going to be more peppy and responsive due to that higher pressure, if that makes sense. Again, not a perfect analogy, but hopefully that gives you a better idea of the impact of voltage on a bike and why the Alta Sigma uh, became so popular. But the reason why I'm talking about them in today's video is because it looks like they're trying to take this one step further with the wonderfully named Alta Sigma Mega. And this thing moves from an already insanely high 98 volt battery to a 144 volt battery. I believe that's an industry first it's literally double the voltage of my bike, 72. And it should result in this thing being just insanely torquey. On the spec sheet here, it lists a, a torque of over a thousand newton meters. And I just can't even imagine what that might feel like. And basically up and down the spec sheet, the Altus Sigma Mega is quite the emoto. The battery is 35 amp hours. So multiply the voltage times the amp hours, that's just over 5,000 watt hours of total capacity. And aside from the voltage, the other most insane specification has to be the, the motor power. It comes in at 51 kilowatts. I mean, that's getting close to like electric car territory. Not quite, but I mean, we're getting there. Oh yeah, and the price is going to be roughly $7,500. Now I say roughly because I believe that's an estimate. The bike isn't for sale quite yet. It should be uh, launching or delivering uh, early next year, which is just a couple months away. Now, as amazing as this bike is, 144 volts, over 50 kilowatts of power, also, we have things like great suspension, the overall construction here, the design, the build, it's all top notch. But putting the hype aside, I would say, unfortunately, this bike is extremely non-practical. A ton of fun to ride, yes. Super unique, very futuristic, yes, yes, and yes. But essentially, the only thing this bike is good for is as uh, a motocross racing bike on at least one of the dealer websites. That's how the bike is actually advertised as strictly a, a racing bike for different uh, motocross tracks. And that's because this bike is not street legal, which I find perplexing. And I mean, eventually they have to make these bikes street legal. If they're gonna make them legit motorcycle power, the next step here has to be to make these things officially street legal. There is a challenge in doing that, uh, conforming to you know state laws and regulations is not super easy but until they do that these bikes are really expensive toys and unlike bikes like the Suron or what I'm on right now you will not be able to get away with riding this on public roads unofficially due to it's just huge size this thing weighs over 250 pounds and that's the downside of all these amazing specs. It makes the bike 
large and uh, not inconspicuous at all. And also just with a price tag of $7,500, uh, personally, I would not want to risk riding this on the road and having it confiscated. So, I mean, ultimately, the way I see this bike is, yes, the spec sheet is amazing. 144 volts, over 50 kilowatts of power. It's objectively fantastic and probably one of the, if not the best, electric bikes ever made. But because it's huge and you can't legally ride it on the streets and it's $7,500, uh, it makes this just a super expensive uh, rich person toy. Now that is just my opinion, and if you guys have a different opinion, let us know in the comments. But I think it's pretty safe to say that most people will be better off with a bike like the Raw Mantis I'm on right now. It's reasonably priced. It's actually about half the price of this Sigma Altus Mega. It's also less than half the weight of that bike and it's still pretty high voltage with, again, that 72 volt battery. But that's it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.